Can you hear? Yes, sir. You so, can hear you now. Okay, Dr. Prem will present you the case, and uh, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. I'll stop a second. Prem, present the case. Okay. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? We can. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Next. Today, we have a 83-year-old male patient with a BMI of 26 with having a risk factor like hypertension, diabetes, and dyslipidemia. All other relevant biochemical analysis is within normal limit. In echocardiography, he is having 54% LV ejection fraction with the minor inferior wall hypokinesia. Patient is on dual antiplatelet aspirin and clopidogrel. He presented to us three months back with the, with the non-specific symptom. At that time, we done the CT scan and that shows the calcified triple vessel disease and angiography was done at that time that was the severe calcified triple vessel disease next and this is the angiography and you can see that osteal proximal rca is severely calcified and the mild disease in the distal rca and pda plv next in the left system you can see the large om at the critical stenosis and the RI is moderately diseased, the proximal LAD having the mild disease, but the mid LAD is critically severe calcified stenosis, followed by a type C long T lesion in up to the early uh, LAD. So this was the angiography. Next, we have stented the RCA and have done the uh, POBA with DCB, the OM, two months back. Now, next. This is our plan to intervene this LAD. Our plan to do LAD intervention with the IVAS. If IVAS doesn't cross, then we'll do the uh, uh, POBA first, then we'll do decide the further. That's all from my side. Thank you. OK. So um, I'm here on my side uh, uh, is uh, Dr. Bernard Reimers, uh, which is, uh, you can clearly uh, figure out which of the two is uh, which. Uh, there, there is no confusion. Uh, we have uh, uh, the crossing uh, into distal LED was not difficult with the Sion, uh, but we needed some help uh, with uh, a microcatheter. We use a fine cross. Uh, let me show you. Um, we had to use a fine cross. Uh, uh, to, uh, to facilitate uh, the crossing uh, of, uh, of the stenosis uh, with the Sion, regular Sion, and uh, the Sion crossed. Not was not difficult, but we had to use the fine cross. Then, uh, of course, uh, I mean, uh, the fine cross did not proceed. So this is a clear sign that uh, there is no time to waste. Uh, we are not going to waste time uh, uh, with IVUS uh, or with the 1.5 or 125 balloon. We went as distal as possible with a fine cross, uh, and then uh, uh, we switched uh, uh, to an, uh, uh, to an uh, uh, rotor wire. The rotor wire was not so difficult to get it distally, and uh, now we have, uh, we have a, a rotor wire distal. We removed uh, the fine cross uh, and uh, we're going to do uh, 1.5 uh, rotational arterectomy. I think uh, when the fine cross has difficulty to go distally, there's no time to waste. Uh, uh, I don't use a 1.0 balloon uh, or stuff like that. Uh, I just go with uh, rotor wire and uh, do rotational arterectomy. Do you agree? We, we completely agree. Uh, that sounds like a good plan. So, Dr. Colombo, talk to us about your burst strategy on 1.5 versus 1.25 and a single versus 1.5. I, I almost always start with 1.5. Nowadays, I rarely use 1.75. Uh, and if I have to use bigger, I use a lithotripsy or high-pressure balloon. But, you know, if the vessel is really big, and uh, maybe I use a 1.75. I try not to start with a 1.25 unless I really need 
because I'm a little bit afraid of the one, two, five that sometimes get trapped. Um, what is interesting uh, is on the medical side, I took the history of this patient and he's always been asymptomatic. I asked him, can you do two flights of stairs with a suitcase in your hands? And he said, I always was able to do that. So despite the triple vessel disease, he was always asymptomatic. So then you may ask you why we are doing this procedure. I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go with, uh, uh, with Dynaglide. Some people don't use Dynaglide to go down, but uh, we like to do that. Uh, Dr. How far you want to go down? How deep will you be going to the... That, I, that I want part? to go... Uh, to go distal to the to that uh, uh, kind of so that's the proximal stenosis okay okay let's go here remove uh, remove uh, the dynaglide okay let's uh, do a film I think we are in the proximal stenosis uh, uh, Bernard, if you see that the wire tends to come back, uh, just push it uh, distally. And what bird speed? I, oh, I can see it. So about 150? Yeah, can you go a little bit distal with the wire? Let him rest a little bit. 24 seconds. We have the Roberta, the nurse. She tells us exactly after 30 seconds. Stop a little. So here the discussion can be uh, one five or one two five. Uh, the bird because it was quite a tight vessel. We have a little bit the idea. Uh, if one five does not go, you use uh, one twenty five. But then you will use one five anyhow. So if you start with one five, uh, you may save some money for one burr. Yeah. And, and typically, a strategy is a single burr. Yeah, I try to use. A... Yeah. You see, it goes down quite a bit. Yeah. It's, um, it's acceleration. way. So not only in India you have calcium. This is a pretty solid specific lesion. I think uh, this is a clear indication for rotational laterectomy. Okay, ECG is fine. Uh, he has some uh, bradycardia when I insist. Uh, has highly calcified lesion and in a challenging location. Uh, the only good thing is not so torture. It's good to let him breathe a little bit. I think one more centimeter, no? Yeah, I think you're at the distal part of the lesion. Yes. I need, uh, I need uh, to gain uh, some length. I'm uh, uh, at the end uh, of my... Uh, so, uh, yeah, but when I go here, uh, at the end, I still need uh, a little bit more. So, how do we gain length? So, the way I do to gain length uh, is uh, to open uh, these... Uh, Okay, Bernard will hold these without looking, just keeping these in the center. And I will go distally with Dynaglite the... Dynaglite or without? Without, with speed. He presses the button. Okay, stop. Okay, I gained a little bit. Eh? So oh, this is a way a to gain, quite a bit. 
Oh, okay. God, there we go. Nicely done. But I like the way to gain speed. It's the only way. So to gain elegant. speed, to gain length. So the, I repeat it. Uh, you keep you, the assistant holds these and looks at the ceiling. Doesn't do anything. Just holds these and doesn't do anything. Looks at the ceiling. Or the nurse. Or the nurse. <laughs> and the other person advances the machine with speed. But it's important that he holds and looks at the ceiling, not look here. Okay. Let's do some other passes. Yeah. Now, that was a great example so, of how to advance the roto bar if you don't have enough length. Yeah, but this is something, let him breathe. I think we can come out. What do you think? Yes, Bernard? maybe I would work a little bit more on the proximal so it makes life easier afterwards because yeah, there we, okay. didn't, we didn't do real rotoblation. Okay. So now we get off lengths. The guiding catheter is yeah, going no, a because little bit I, deeper. Yeah. Okay. Let's come back a little bit more. So how to reduce length? The By, same uh, way? You, I use the same. Come back. Okay. okay. You know, I'm not used to this Rota Pro. Huh? I'm still, uh, I always look for the, for the, for Pedal. something on the, on the down. Yeah, I have the same problem, Dr. Colombo. My muscle memory is still bad for the Roto Pro. Yeah. I think it's okay. But yeah, I end the curve. Do, do some work here. It will, will get our life easier yeah, afterwards. The wire yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Anche un po' più proximale che c'era ancora quella lesione. Okay. Because we, ha we have to get material down here. I think it's worth to pave our way. Okay. Okay, let's go to uh, Dynaglide. Come back. Take uh, wait, wait a second. I have to get the wire nicely free. There is a seam stamp by Gemini. Eh? He needs to digest uh, because we did the pretty aggressive rotation. Eh? What is important now to do quickly is to dilate with the balloon to get some good distal flow. I do this before exchanging the wire. I just go quickly. Che pallone vuoi? Due zero, tuo balloon. Tuo balloon. Due zero semi compliante. Yeah. Semi compliante. Yes. I like to do it immediately over this wire to get some good distal flow. Two zero twenty semi compliant. Just to Can get you some see the EKG flow. at some You see Germany. the ECG is still uh, in pain. And then you do a short I, sir. When do you do an angio? Ah, let's do an angio. Yeah. Ready? Wait, I have to fill. Uh, Peter. Ready? Yes. Okay. It's okay. There is a reasonable distal flow. But uh, I still like uh, to get uh, better perfusion in order to, and then uh, I put uh, regular wire, but uh, I don't want uh, to delay these. And that's Would a good idea used... to, to dilate it rather than waste time changing the wire at this stage so that the, the, the distal vessel has much better perfusion. Yeah, I need uh, to give distal perfusion. And you know, in the old time, uh, we used uh, even to do all the procedure over mm. the rotor wire. <laughs> but nowadays... Uh, yeah. We didn't know about trapping balloon and all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what what anticoagulation are you on, Dr. Colombo, here? Uh, heparin, uh, heparin 9000. Uh, Abbiamo già la CT. Ok, inflate. It's 260 for the ACT. 6, 7, 8, 10. 10 is ok, not too much. Yeah. Down. 10. Poi il um, microcatetere, il fine cross. 
Balloon goes down well. Let's take a picture. Ready? Not much, bad, much, not much bad. Better. Not bad, not bad. We can do dracotti balloon, two dracotti balloon case finished. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell us your thinking here, Dr. Colombo, between a drug coated balloon or a stent, and how do you approach that? I, I make the decision according to the result, to the angiographic result. Uh, sometimes I use IVUS, but if the angiographic result is very acceptable, oh. I, I take it. Because um, uh, I, I wanted to place a stand proximal, but uh, you know, the result is not so bad. We dilated. Uh, uh, we certainly need to dilate proximally with the trio, non-compliant. Uh, maybe we need um, uh, to do a more dilatation where we did rotablation. But remember, um, we are not doing the cosmetic surgery of the coronaries. We are trying to establish a good distal flow in a patient who is uh, asymptomatic. Wait. So our goal is not to make it symptomatic. Okay, hello. Right. And I was what do, talking to, yeah. Sorry, what, what do you think about imaging and at what point would you consider an IVUS or an OCT here? I do, I do imaging if the angiographic result is so-and-so. If the angiographic, I have imaging on the table. Eh? So we opened it, open. you'll, you'll have it, you'll have it. <laughs> yeah, I know that Bernard is going to push me to do imaging and I'll follow. But uh, you ask me the question oh. to me, I do imaging when the angiographic result is so and so. If the angiographic right. result is good, the, uh, Sion. Sion, Sion. So do you think we I should do an them. IFR or an FFR, even if the angiographic result is good? If the angiographic result is good, I don't do IFR on the FFR. Would you be pre uh, preparing and, uh, the lesion with a cutting balloon or something before we, we still, take the test? We still, we still have bigemini, eh? so he still has been suffering from what we did. We, we had a very good question, cutting balloon following uh, rotablation. <laughs> I think uh, I, I, would, I would not do routinely. I give you a test because yeah, you let's can go, go, we are in can a go better. Okay, thank you. Let me see the tip. I think we stay there. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, yeah that's pretty looks distal. Like distal. You want Nanto or, uh, or uh, trapping balloon? Uh, Nanto. Nanto, okay, whatever. You decide. Let's take a good picture now. Let's take the sometimes as past. Right, okay, good. ready? Um, some nitro and uh, yeah no it's a good result my god eh? yeah it seemed like a good result i can't tell for sure is uh, since there's glare on my screen is there a dissection there after the diagonal or a little bit a little bit uh, okay osco is gonna do nanto I need some more water. I don't think it goes. It's okay. Prepare, I'll do it Otherwise, zero. we go with the trap. We have the two balloon. Let's see. Ready? Perfect. Okay. So, Nanto worked. I, I don't do Nanto if I have an hydrophilic wire distally. No, because that's absolutely not. But if I have uh, if I had a Sion blue, I, I would not have done the Nanto. Okay, so uh, I'm glad uh, that no. now we have sinus rhythm 
and the bigeminis gun, which is a good sign. Uh, let's uh, do a, should we do a dilatation with a 3 ohm non-compliant proximally? Yeah. I think we need. And, and the 2.5. And the 2.5. Uh, we start uh, distal with the non-compliant. Okay, a 2.5 non-compliant. Non -compliant. Should, we we uh, should we place a wire in the diagonal? Yes. Okay, let's do like that. Place a wire in the diagonal. But you know, it's not a bad result. If you want to be minimalistic, you could take a 2.5 DCB 40 distally and the trio proximally, and uh, could be okay. Eh? Could be okay. And are you are you still thinking a stenting strategy, or are you thinking uh, no, minimalistic I'm, approach? I'm, 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 I'm thinking. Uh, let's see what happens after the trio balloon proximally. Uh, so my decision is always uh, retroact. Uh, depends on the result I get. So far, I, I tend to be for DCB, so far. So your opinion but, uh, on uh, cutting balloon before DCB? Not, I would not. I only do cutting balloon before DCB if I don't have a good dilatation or if I have an instant restenosis. And if I have an instant restenosis. We, we had uh, more than one perforation doing cutting aggressive but well, not uh, oversized but high pressure cutting following uh rotablation i don't know what this pistol of is uh, dr antonio we just had a quick case in the previous session wherein a, we had to use a drug eluting balloon in the distal led but post uh, balloon uh, deb the, the result was very suboptimal so we had to put in a stent so there was a question in the audience from the audience and from the panelists that a drug eluting balloon followed by a drug eluting stent, what would be the consequences on the vessel with the double dosing of the drug? Oh, we used to do it uh, many years ago. Uh, we never had a problem. As a matter of fact, we had uh, even a study that we wanted to do of uh, uh, DCB and uh, DS. Uh, for patient on dialysis, uh, or patient uh, with renal insufficiency, but we never were able to get the study approved. But uh, we have uh, a lot of cases uh, piccolo test. with piccolo test, where we did uh, uh, DS after DCB without any problem. We didn't have any thrombosis, any late aneurysm or stuff like that. Let's but it's a funny it. vessel, this diagonal, it many curves, perfect. Okay, let's leave uh, the torque there. Let's go with the uh, 2.5 or 2 or 3 or whatever is ready. It's coming the 2.5 non-compliant. How long? Eh? 20. 20, good. So if you have multiple dissections after a regulating balloon, uh, would you leave it alone or would you? Yeah, yeah. As, as long as they are uh, linear dissection, no no persistent staining, no good flow, flow I leave it alone. So we're going to start inflating a little bit more distally. Is a non compliant balloon. Is this the 2.5? 2.5. Two, two Okay, let's inflate there. Let's go, how much? 15, 16. 15, 16. Okay, I, I like to take it at least 20 seconds. Yeah. I think this is not too long balloons, non-compliant balloons, and not too short inflations. So it's good old angioplasty. And I also, I like 15. to have a long balloon. They don't have it in many labs, long balloons, but this would be a good case for a 30 millimeter balloon. On one hand, but sometimes even then you should go a little higher with the pressure. Yeah. Because you cannot distribute so, so good the pressure on long balloons, I think. Okay, it down. Like good, ah, good that's not 20 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> I, I beg your pardon? It, it seems they, like good it's expansion. expansion. Yeah. yeah, good expansion, but uh, zero. you know, rotablation uh, is, uh, is the best. 
down. You know what I used to do in the old time uh, when I didn't uh, have Ivus on Ivus was very expensive. Pardon? I used to leave the balloon there and take an angel. Take an angel. If I see a good flow distally, means that I have a good residual lumen. This is a very poor man uh, approach, uh, but very hey, good. Your opinion on drug diluting scaffolds in the proximal lesion? Ah, if I had it, I would put uh, in an 84 year old gentleman, you may really wonder, but if you believe that people are born again, uh, that may be okay. <laughs> You're born again with a stent. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, I think uh, in a short LED, maybe the additional advantage is questionable. What do you think, Prem? Yeah, because very discrete lesion and uh, result after the uh, rota is very good and the TME 3 flow uh, is my point of view that we can put a stand at this because the size is still very good, but all uh, my point of view that we have to put a stand, we should put. That was the original plan. Yeah. Yeah. And we can go with the hybrid. Uh, okay. These are uh, three or people test. Okay. These are three or non-compliant balloon. How long? 20. How many atmosphere? 16, 18. 18 atmosphere. Trio. Does it make sense to do poba, uh, to do a pot, sorry, uh, in front of bifurcation if you don't put stents? Not really, no. Oh, I think it's okay. Maybe. Looks okay. And are you Negative. planning to do anything I, with the diagonal, Dr. Colombo? No, but I don't want to compromise a big septal. You see, there is a huge septal that uh, I want to keep it uh, in good shape. Eh? I think... Uh, Time for Andrew and Ivos. Yeah. Uh, you want to do an Andrew? Yeah, let's do an Andrew. We didn't do after the 2.5. Uh, you want okay. some nitro? Uh, give us some nitro. Good. Pressure is good. Let's give some nitro. We give a little bit of nitro, and then we do an angel. There is still a little bit of ST elevation, not much, but I think we did a quite That's extensive out. rotor. Let's fill with contrast. Ponte. Okay, so this is a film after three O proximally and two point five mid distally non-compliant balloon. And Ivos has arrived. Uh, nitro has arrived. That already looks good. Okay, there is a linear dissection proximal where but the dissection is clearing. Distally looks really good. Distally yeah, is does. really good. And I see I will, Dr. Uh, Dr. I will enjoy really, this as well. <laughs> I, I, I will take a, I will take a conservative approach, which means a stand proximal and the DCB distal. I think uh, this is a very reasonable approach. You want Ivus? Yeah, let's uh, do we, Ivus. We learn. Uh, and, and are you going to Ivus now or after? Yes, I'm going to Ivus now. I do it for you. Eh? Personally, mm -hmm. if I was not in a live transmission, I would not do Ivus. So, Dr. Colombo, uh, Ajay Kirpane just came straight off the plane, and I think he'll be very happy with the decision to Ivus here. So yeah, I yeah. Think, uh, you might not know this case, but 83 year old asymptomatic got PCI yeah. to DRCA and CERC, and then heavily calcified LED, rotored with a 1.5, balloon with a 2.5 decile, and in the but mid decile. Yeah, the reason why I may be a little bit reluctant to do IVUS that I don't want that the IVUS force me to place a stent distal. Yeah, I think, Antonio, I think your point is when you do this much work and is this diffuse disease, sometimes the IVUS, you're, you know what you're going to see. It's going to look dissected and all kinds of things going on. Yeah, and, and, and a little stent. bit. Uh, 
You can be efficient was, not doing this then, but it'll be instructive for the uh, audience. Let's, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, told, we are distal. Me going to are, make me happy. <laughs> we are distal to the IVU. The vessel is one, two, is three millimeters. So uh, 2.5, uh, 2.5 is uh, conservative. Let's start pull back. Let's start pull back. C'è qualcuno live? Sta, inizia. So, Ajay, while we're waiting for the IVUS images, is there data that suggests that... Can you I, see the IVUS? Oh, can you see the IVUS? We can, Dr. Colombo. Okay, so we are distal. The lumen is uh, pretty good. The vessel is uh, 2.5... Uh, 275 maybe it's helpful though because it, it's definitely you know people might be tempted to use smaller balloons and smaller dcb and this is a pretty big vessel yeah this is almost one two three three millimeter small three millimeter lumen looks okay yeah not so bad actually the branch good. there that's the diagonal that's a calcific, but the residual lumen is not bad. So don't forget that this patient is 84. Eh? He's not uh, 18 years old. <laughs> there is some calcium. No, he came in with an end stemmy of the other vessels. No, so no. Here, lumen is bigger. Now we are joint. We should reach the diagonal with the second wire. Yeah. Yep. It's interesting though the calcium, except for that one area where it's concentric, is largely eccentric and. Yeah, but that, that area where it was concentric was distal to the diagonal. Yep. And I tell you, if we place a stand there, we're gonna kill that big septum. Yep. I don't want. So now we are going closer to the proximal lesion where we did the trio balloon, the calcium is broken. This is definitely is a 3.5 vessel here. Residual lumen is not bad. Eh? It looks really good. Not, How aggressively did, did you prep it after the rota, just a 2.5? I'm or? not very aggressive. I did the 2.5 distally and trio proximally. Okay. Here we are already outside the area of interest. Okay, I think we can come out. So, so the IVUS was not so bad, except for the area, as you pointed out, a little bit distal to the diagonal, where there is the emergency of a, of a... But let's first do I will do a DCB distally, and then we take the decision proximally. 2.540 magic touch. We go 2.540 magic touch distally, and then we take the decision proximally. How is the dissection looking on the IVUS, sir? It didn't look bad. The dissection, there was not a lot of flow limitation. It looked pretty good. Yeah. I think, Sarah, well, you were going to ask the question. The you have any data using the IVUS after the prep step versus otherwise. I don't know of any data specifically, but I actually think in a, in a stenting case, it's probably more important to IVUS before you put the stent in than um, you know before you do anything to the lesion itself. If you're going to use this approach, what time I, I think it's it's so, fine either way, but yeah, this was helpful for sizing purposes. Yeah, and I think the I was surprised by the size of the LED, which I always am, right? Like angiographically, it looks like it's not a substantial vessel and it almost always is more substantial on imaging than than on angiography. Yeah, yeah, but I think proximal LED uh, in uh, Western, uh, in, in Italy or in Europe in general is 3.5. Eh? And it's a big gentleman. Eh? <laughs> okay, so we go with, uh, with the uh, 2.5 or 40 magic touch. We try to go down quickly, not spend much time into the guiding catheter. Which is an XB4, so it's it's a large gentleman. <laughs> yep. Okay. Let's get a little bit support. That delivers kind of nicely. Okay. Yeah. 
I think I, we need another one uh, anyhow now, drug coated. You think so? Uh, because the disease started yeah. in okay. uh, proximal let's, to the... Uh, let's inflate... Uh, to 14. Mean, uh, 14. One minute. One minute. Uh, so, do you want to place this tent approximately? I mean, approximately where uh, you are there or not? Uh, you decide. I do what... Uh, Prem decides. <laughs> what do you think, Prem? Lumen is quite good, actually. Good, but uh, small dissection as also linear dissection is also there. And I'm in support to deploy a stand at this because it's all mid allery and we don't want to lose uh, this. Lumen is not bad, eh? but it's still the dissection you can see. Yeah, but the dissection, it's out of when the you have advanced disease, the only way to dilate the lesion is to dissect. Yes. But then Prem had decided to stand before the wire was passed. So Antonio, what are you, what are you doing these so. days with these? You, you leave it alone. If the flow is fine, would you do yeah, you I doing physiology alone. too, right? Would yeah. you always but do physiology? He, I used to do physiology. I use physiology much oh. less. Because now, one minute. I kind of learn biogeography, yep. which is the one. And I don't keep on injecting, of course. But you see, they die clear Dimagic pretty touch well. Tre venti. And... Um, we do a 320 magic touch proximal. Okay, 320. Is 20 long enough? Ah, no, maybe, uh, oh, of course. Maybe, if you won't put 30. a stent, I was maybe 30. 30. Maybe 30. Excuse me. 330. Because you if you wanna, put a stent. You don't want to use 3.5, low pressure, because the vessel is big. Eh? The vessel is big, but. Uh, Cross, so let's uh, go 3, 320. Yeah, it's, uh, three, it, uh, the three, area is 2.8. 330, 330, yes. 330. The diameter okay. of the area that we achieved is 2.8, 2.6. Okay. So I think that's... But can uh, I ask cool. other people on the panel, are you using these approaches now with DCB? I mean, we've watched Antonio for years. When I was a fellow, he would have put eight stents in this vessel. Yeah. And now he's putting no stents. So what are you all doing? Well, let's, let's maybe start off here. So... Of but course, uh, uh, approximately, I will go for the stent. But, no, but uh, you stint. know, it's uh, uh, we used to do the same. But if the result is good, uh, you're still delivering the drug, and uh, it's um, I don't know. I'm no, not against stenting, but uh, I, I think the marginal gain uh, is marginal. But what's very funny is every conference I see Antonio at, he has his laptop. And then he shows me the cases between the last conference and this one that are crazier and crazier, but without stents. And the patient's been doing very well. So it may be yeah, that we can do things differently. And he wrote a very nice paper talking about this paradigm shift in European Heart Journal, probably, I think, five, six months ago. It's, it's, it's actually worth a read. <laughs> what, what are you doing now, Ajay? Are you, are you well, we don't have drug coated balloons. Yeah. We don't have drug coated balloons in the U.S. So we, we're stuck. Yeah, we're stuck. But I, but, you know, honestly, I try not to stent beyond that diagonal in the LED because it, I mean, the patient's 84. Yeah. If the patient were younger, you run out of options. So we have the options of a drug coated balloon, uh, a biovascular and uh, the issue is, uh, in case that causes an issue and we have to go with the death after that, the cost factor comes yeah, in a lot. Uh, otherwise, uh, DEP. Uh, looks very promising. Smaller vessels, distal vessels, we uh, predominantly go with them. Otherwise, BRS in the uh, proximal vessels. And what's the cost differential um, between the DES and the DCB here? So uh, the DES is fixed. Uh, the government is fixed yeah. at 38,000 something. 40,000 and 60, 60, 65,000. It's a double. 65,000. Okay. W what, which yeah, one? Yeah. The stent is? The DCB is double. Yes, the same, in Italy. the same in Italy. And the same the, in Italy. And the problem the is that, uh, is that uh, DCB are not reimbursed by the social yeah. system. Yeah, so in really fact, funny. in the U.S., yeah. Antonio, it's going to be probably even more funny in the U.S. because in the U.S., um, we don't know yet, but there are rumors that it's going to be five or six times the price of a drug-coated stent, drug-eluting stent. Yeah, but this is... This is a little bit. Uh, um, I don't understand. This, this goes why. to the whole panel and to Antonio. Um, I've used drug eluting balloons 
in the ostium of the circumflex on several occasions, including when I left main stent, I've never had a problem. So I don't know the data out there, but it's increasingly attractive, I think. Oh, yeah, the ostium of the, the, ostium the, ostium of the circumflex, I agree. <laughs> the place, if you can avoid a stent. Uh... Okay, ECG is a little bit better. I think uh, the ST elevation is almost gone. It's almost gone. This is another important sign, eh? because uh, if you have a good distal flow, it uh, means that you don't have a, any impairment. Let's take a picture. Okay, wait, I feel, okay. Ready? Yes. That looks great. Let's take another projection. So I think for the audience that may have missed Antonio's point, when he was first doing this with DCP only, he was doing a lot of physiology. So he would put a pressure wire down to make sure there was no yeah. flow rotation. But what he's, I think, said is that as he's gotten more and more well, comfortable and seeing the physiology yeah. being okay, he's doing less and less of that unless... I, I do something. much less physiology. I used to do physiology to be a little bit safer. I just wanted to have uh, angio and physiology because I didn't want to put the patient at risk. But now it's almost one year that I almost stopped to do physiology, unless uh, I have any doubt. But if I have doubt, uh, maybe I place a stent. Okay, this is an area. I think it looks okay. With your left cranial creatinine is okay. All right, maybe vote from the panel. With this result now, forget the cost considerations. Who puts a stent in? Raise your hand if you're going to put a stent in. Two, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think there is staining now. Yeah, but it goes yeah. away. You see, clean. No, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, go away. But, uh, Let's uh, see whether it's still there. Yeah, but uh, almost. Make a picture without dye, whether it's still there. And it seems to me still that there. the flow to the distal. Apical LED is still a tad sluggish. Uh, plus, we don't have a DCB, so I'm biased. Yeah. But that's also deep wall calcium there, too. So, can I ask a question? Yes, yeah, so she'll go okay. ahead. Antonio, so she, I've been watching and you, we all learn, but there's a, you know, you have thousands and thousands of procedures and you have eyes behind thousands of procedures. People in the audience that don't have that experience, you know, the walking it's okay. Away. I'm. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, arguing a guy against uh, not placing or placing a stand proximally. I think uh, uh, if you do a randomized study in those type of lesions to show a benefit of a DCB, you need a thousand, thousand. So, because stents are working because well. Because stents are working well. So you do whatever you like. It's no, no. Like my my question to you, for a, your junior colleague that's one, two years out, you know, do they not do this case? If they end up doing this case, do you do you uh, tell them to err on the side of stenting? Uh, yeah, no. I, I, yeah, I got your question. I think uh, someone who is starting should place a stent, and slowly, not. But uh, again, the marginal gain of not placing a stent proximally is minimal or almost zero so maybe if this patient has to go surgery in one month maybe that's a good reason not to place a stand proximally but uh, i think if you have any doubt if you are entering this field you should move slowly and you should understand there is a big gain not placing a stand distally because you don't want to compromise the diagonal you don't want to compromise the septal, and you don't want to place a 2.5, a 38 millimeter stent, but approximately a 3.5, 18, or 20, or 16 makes a no. So you understand the difference between A and B. That's great. So great, summary. Three, great summary. 3 or 15 as opposed to the latest three Yes. Yes. And, uh, and uh, I think. Uh, Bernard should do that. <laughs> so the question was, does imaging make a difference? And I think that what imaging helped is with the size of the vessel. I do think that it will help for optimizing the stent if it was placed proximally. Um, but distally, 
the, the one thing you need to know about imaging is when to use it, when not to use it, and yeah. how to use it. And I think if you did too much imaging and ended up placing a stent across the diagonal down to the apex, you can remove that's the an wire overuse from of the imaging. diagonal. So you have to be All really right. good uh, at doing it, yeah. know when to position. use it, when not to. Ajay, this is Ashish. How are you doing here? I have a question related to the futures in terms of newer bioabsorbable stents vis-a-vis -vis this type of result with drug eluting balloons. In other words, what does this do to the magnesium-based scaffolds and other scaffolds with thinner struts and thinner strut thickness that are on the horizon with biovascular stents? It's and a, that's a question for Antonio as well. Yeah, it's a great yeah, question. But it is a very important question. If you had if you had a bioresorbable magnesium new generation dreams uh, 100 micron would you place the stent distally no even if i had a bioresorbable because the gain towards okay. a well done dcb is uh, questionable so i will not place a, a bioresorbable stent okay, distally cool. if i have to place it i may place it proximally but not distally mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I, I, actually, to your point, I would say that, I mean, this this is all cutting edge oh, stuff. Oh, and so there are studies going on right now comparing this strategy of what we're seeing to more conventional okay. strategies. We assume that they're going to be positive, but we don't know that. And there is a small chance of leaving behind, you know, a dissection that you have to come back for. And people were talking about in the panel, if that happens, it's a problem. So we'll have to see. But um, in most of the studies, the reported chance of abrupt closure with this type of strategy is very, very low. Um, very but, low. Very but, low. But Antonio is also one who, if he did have a flow limiting dissection, he would put a stent in. And so oh, no it's question, happening no about 30% of the time or so. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, still so, useful uh, to have stent in the castle. Uh, oh, yeah. So Bernard <laughs> placed uh, a three millimeter, quant'era uh, era lungo lo stent? Uh, 15. 15. Uh, and he's going to post the later with a 3.5 non-compliant balloon. 12 in length. 12. So I like to start with a small stent size and then post a late a little bigger, uh, hoping to avoid a little bit the, the, the edge dissections. And again, the teaching point of this case is not to go home and rotoblade an LED and don't stent it. The idea here is to think about the distal vessel, think exactly where you're putting the stents, why you're putting them in, optimize them as you're Oof. doing. And all the decision but making if, is yeah. greater. I mean, it, you, you go from one step to the air further next. I mean, have a plan going in, but then keep flexibility. But if I had if I had to place a stent distally, I would place a wire you? also in the septal. I'm a little bit uh, concerned uh, about this. the septal, and I don't want to lose Negative. it. Big septal, huh? He may develop left bundle branch okay, block. Right. Ajay, how often do you do you wire the septals to protect them? Rarely, very rarely, very rarely. Only when I have uh, such a big, uh, a little bit compromised, uh, very rarely. But uh, doesn't mean uh, never. Yeah, I mean, the, Antonio used to come to the Columbia Cath Lab, and so many of his practices, even though he's not there as much cool. anymore, are still there. And so we, you know, probably relative to other cath labs, overwire branches. I can't say I do septal wiring for protection that often, but if it's a big dominant septal, um, I've actually been burned through a case of, of someone else I know um, uh, with a septal. So I would, if it's a big dominant septal, there's nothing else I probably would wire. Yeah. I okay. think we can go a little, and we get a bit okay. of Especially the wire it's... out, so we see the distal LID. Okay. okay. Applying a CTO of the right, for example. Yeah, you were right. There is some sluggish flow in the very distal LID. Yeah, but this may be caused by, by the rotor I, I think so, too. It's not necessarily... That's what we had before. Let's look uh, in, in the, the RAO. In, yeah. Okay. No, it's coming back. 
I think it's okay. I think it's okay. But uh, the distal uh, sluggish flow is due to the rotablation. You're not going to improve by stenting uh, that area. As a matter of fact, you may even get it worse. Antonio, yes. I have a question for you. After you saw the IVIS of what the calcium looked like, um, if you went back, would you? I didn't see the beginning, but would you have rotobladed the whole thing, or you think a balloon-based strategy would work? No, no, we we rotobladed also that area. The problem is that uh, uh, if you really wanted to do it, you, we should have taken a 175 burr for the proximal part. Got it. Because uh, it's really it's really small. I think it's okay. I think it's okay. This is a great result. It looks like a, yeah. a fantastic result. And uh, believe it, uh, I asked the patient, uh, how can we make you feel better? He said, I already feel excellent. So, <laughs> so that, there, there is some dissection, uh, I would say three centimeters distal to the diagonal. You can see here in the distal uh, LAD, yeah. but uh, it's not flow limiting. And of course, if you start uh, to to stent yeah. there, uh, then uh, you probably I, I, need. Uh, well, we tried it out, spot stenting. It never no, worked. No, I think it's okay. And I, Antonio, I think we like. fine. one last question for you: When there is residual dissection, are you routinely leaving the patient in the lab for another ten minutes and waiting, or do you just no, you know, no, not, no, not, no. Not doing the only, the only, the only thing that I tend to do is uh, to give. Uh, for two weeks, uh, Ticagrelo or Prasugrel, for two weeks. And then you go down to Plavix. Yeah. Got it. And so, so this patient was already on aspirin and Plavix, right? Doc? Yeah, yeah, he's 84 years old. The result is very good. Dissection is minimal. I'm not going to expose an 84 year old to very aggressive antiplatelet therapy. I think. What? And are, you, are you checking the PRU or are you checking the resistance, resistance to Plavix at all or no? In, uh, in Columbus, I check the PRU. Here we don't. Yeah. You know, but uh, I'm never. But he's I'm, on double since uh, May, no? In the beginning yeah, of May. Months, he, he, I, I'm, and and, I'm uh, never consistent in my. Long, long stance on the right. <laughs> How about here okay. in India? Because resistance is higher here. So the people checking or double dosing or what are people doing? Yeah, we do double dose for a short duration of two weeks, yeah. maybe a month. Yeah, I think we do see a higher, higher uh, clopidogrel resistance in Asians than. Compared yeah, to I, I, I'm yeah. a, I'm a heterozygote. I know. Oh. So right. when I have my STEMI here, please give me Ticagrelor or Prasugrel. So, so okay. Dr. Colombo, that's a fantastic oh, result. Okay. Thank you for thank sharing you very that much case for this opportunity. Uh, thank you, Bernard, for. Uh, uh, yeah. Letting us do the case with a short notice. Yes. And uh, Vito, Roberto, Sandro, and uh, all the stuff here. Uh, thank no. you for having us. Thanks, well, thanks to the whole thank team. Thanks to the whole team. It was wonderful. It was thank wonderful you. to see.